May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord my God. Amen. The Feast of Candlemas commemorates the, pre the presentation of the baby Jesus to God in the temple at Jerusalem and also the ritual purification of Mary 40 days after the birth of her son. Jesus was met by Anna and Simeon. Simeon held the baby Jesus and called him a light to the world. Therefore, this is a feast rich in meaning with several themes running through it. Presentation, purification, meeting, light for the world. And the festival is called Candlemas because traditionally this was the day that all the church's candles for the year were blessed. I'd like us to consider the main characters in our gospel reading. So firstly, Simeon. There was nothing special about the elderly Simeon that qualified him to take up the Christ child in his arms and bless him. There's no record that he was an ordained religious leader or had special authority. He was simply a righteous and devout man who had a close walk with God. Simeon, whose name means God hears, is an example of how God honors those who engage in quiet prayer and constant watchfulness. He was a man of patient faith who patiently waited for the Messiah. We're not always very good at waiting, are we? We get impatient with the length of the queue at the supermarket entrance. We fret about when we're going to be invited for our vaccination. We want this lockdown to end. We want to move on to the next stage in our lives. We do well to take a leaf out of Simeon's book, to come before God and recognize that all things happen in his time and in his way. Simeon was tuned in to the voice of the Holy Spirit. He knew that the Redeemer would come, not as some heroic champion of the nation of Israel, nor with a political agenda of violence, but as a baby carried in the arms of his parents. His kingdom would prove to be a stumbling block to some and the rock of salvation to others. Jesus, the light of the world, speaks to us today by the Holy Spirit. Listen. Watch and wait for his voice. And then on to Mary and Joseph. Following her ritual purification, Mary was permitted to rejoin the worship in the temple. And so along with her husband, Joseph, she presented her son to God. Mary and Joseph were amazed when Simeon spoke those prophetic words that we know as the Nunc Dimittis over the infant Jesus. I've been wondering what amazed them. In another translation, it says they marveled at what was said about him. Perhaps this young couple who could only afford the simplest of sacrifices 
prescribed by the law, thought that it was wonderful that God should choose this old man to proclaim that the baby he held was the Messiah, the one who was to become the light to the whole world. Perhaps they were still adjusting to the enormity of being parents to the Saviour. Mary was to hear more from Simeon, and she took to heart the special personal words concerning her sorrow that was yet to come. There's a rhyme that goes, the snowdrop in purest white array first rears her head on Candlemas Day. Snowdrops are also named Candlemas Bells. Their white flowers have a symbolic significance linked with Mary, the epitome of purity and innocence. The snowdrop's limited height and the flower's likeness to a bowed head compares with Mary's humility and modesty, as well as to the profound sorrow that caused her to hang her head following the crucifixion of her son. For many of us, snowdrops bring hope. They're the sign of new growth and new beginnings. It's the promise of spring and that this tiny flower is surviving despite the cold and the dark. Snowdrops bring a lift to our spirits, don't they? Let them remind you that new life in Jesus Christ comes out of his death on the cross for you. And then Anna. This elderly lady was known to be a prophet, a woman who spoke for God, who proclaimed his truth. Throughout her long years as a widow, she had devoted herself to prayer and fasting within the temple grounds. Then one day, the child Jesus appeared and Anna, full of praise to God, joyfully witnessed to all around her that the Redeemer had come. Anna knew what it was to dwell in God's presence, to just be with him. It enabled her to interpret what she saw and heard. Ladies, those of you who are advanced in years, who have wisdom and experience, do not underestimate your value to the church. Some of you have given absolutely invaluable prayer support to others. And I know that Father Andrew is grateful to those he can rely on in this way. Some of us may find our enforced isolation difficult. May I suggest that we can use this time to deepen our prayer lives, to intercede for the church, for our families and friends, for our nation and for the world. Candlemas is also a story about community. If we look at the people who met together in the temple, we have a baby, two parents, and two elderly people who are unrelated to the parents or to each other. And this strikes me as being a story of what church at its very best can be like of young and old, male and female, seeking faith and blessing and God together. 
a feature of church is unrelated people of different ages and backgrounds getting along together. We need one another to find our inspiration and our blessing. Isolation affects older people and also younger people. The answer always lies in one another. Perhaps the strongest attraction of Candlemas is the bittersweet nature of what it celebrates. It is a feast day and the revelation of the child Jesus in the temple greeted by Simeon and Anna, calls for rejoicing. Nevertheless, the prophetic words of Simeon, which speak of the falling and rising of many and the sword that will pierce, lead on to the Passion and to Easter. These words of Simeon, coming as they do at the very end of our Christmas celebration and with Lent close by, make Candlemas a kind of pivot in the Christian year. It is my prayer that today will become a pivot point in my life of faith and yours. Amen. <laughs>